And what impact will the ban on live sheep exports have on farmers? Well, when you look at the industry itself, there's a discussion around that the government has taken this to two elections that have a mandate. Well, let's be clear. The first election they lost and the second election, it was only put out on the table 15 days before the actual vote was taken. So we don't consider it a core election promise. Secondly, when you look at the industry, if there is no confidence, if there is no investment by government, um, of course, the trade itself is going to struggle. And we have seen this trade almost double, if not triple, the size it currently sits. And the estimates of the value of it is somewhere between $200 million to $177 million by the Western Australian government. And they themselves, who are a Labor seat, who are Labor state, actually support the trade. So for us, not only is that the direct input of the of the industry and what it's worth, but the knock-on effects, the people who help drive the, the transportation, the people who supply the hay to the industry, the people whose jobs are involved in the processing at the other end uh, where the markets actually are into the Middle East who are dependent on live sheep. They don't have the capacity to have refrigerated box meat like we enjoy in Western countries. Um, means that the whole knock-on effect of this isn't just isolated to what is considered to be 1% of the industry, but it should be seen as an integrated part of agriculture as a whole because we do want to have sheep in our industries, we do want to have sheep in our production systems because that's more holistic, but also we're supplying a market that if we're not um, giving sheep at that high animal welfare standards, if we're not supplying that market at the current accreditation that we do, they will source it from somewhere else. And roughly five to seven million sheep go into this market. And if we're not playing our part to lift the standards, that's going to be a disastrous animal welfare outcome for everybody. David, the federal budget includes $107 million to help the industry transition away from these exports. What does that package look like and what else do you think could be done to support farmers through the transition? Well, the transition is proposed to be over four years and with $107 million, as you've said, of which nine million have already been spent and around about um, 64 million has been e-tagged for the industry itself to physically transition. Now, not all that's going to go to farmers. Our concern is not only is the time frame too short, but the quantum of the funds is too small to actually make any significant change to how we operate our businesses. But our message is even simpler than that. We're telling the government that they can hold on to their $107 million and put that into something that will build economic development, maybe roads, maybe infrastructure to help agriculture, and we'll keep the trade, thank you very much. We have not asked for this to occur to us. We believe that um, after the disastrous scenes that we've seen um, as far as uh, seven years ago when the industry had to step up, invest the money, get better animal welfare standards in place, that we've done that. We've done what's been asked of us. When we have this discussion around social license, when we talk about what is the industry actually like now, currently, we've done the hard yards and that's what we want to be judged on. We want to be judged on the science and evidence of today's practice, not on the bad deeds and the, and the horrible scenes that we saw previously.